book review time. Yeah. Um, what's up, everybody? Today, I want to do a book review on one of my absolutely favorite books in the world. It's called Asheron by Sherilyn Kenyon. And my last um, book review was on a Sherilyn Kenyon book, too. So, I thought it fits. Alright, um, for all those of you who don't know, Sherilyn Kenyon is a writer. What is her stuff called? Well, paranormal, kind of, rom par paranormal romance writer, or whatever. And, um... Alright, let's start with a summary. Okay, quick synopsis. I'm just going to read the back cover of the book, what it says. It says, 11,000 years ago, a god was born, cursed into the body of a human. Asheron spent a lifetime of shame, but the strongest steel is forged from the fires of hell. Asheron's death unleashed unspeakable horror and almost destroyed the earth. Then, brought back against his will, he became the sole defender of mankind. Only it was never that simple. For centuries, Asheron fought for our survival in his hidden past. He'll do anything to keep concealed until a lone woman who refuses to be intimidated by him threatens his very existence. Now his survival and ours hinges on hers. An old enemy reawakens and unites to kill them both. War has never been more deadly or more fun. All right. That is what the back of the book says. Um, that's the best simple description that can be done for it because it's very long and very, very, very detailed. All right, the non spoilery part. All right, Sherilyn King is a great author. I love all of her work. Her character development is great, it's spot on. It's She manages to um, give a character a lot of depth in like a short amount of time because like, a lot of her books aren't very long. And like she can create this entire person so perfectly and detailed, and like not a lot of time, I guess. Oh, all right. But for some spoilers, um, this book is really, really good. It's kind of the precursor to her entire Dark Hunter series. It more or less is. Um, freaking Ashron was born cursed into the body of a human because his father and all the other gods in the Atlantis heaven wanted him killed because of the three fates who in this universe are half Atlantean gods and half Greek gods so the three fates weren't Zeus's kids they were um, Archon the Zeus of Atlantis and um they spoke his fate. His fate was to doom all the Atlantean gods. And they wanted him killed because of it, obviously, out of self-preservation. So his mom, of course, didn't want him to die. So she put him into the body of a human queen so that he would be born and pampered and all that. And then by the time he was old enough to defend himself, she was going to give him his powers back and let him defend himself against all the other gods that want him killed. And that was supposed to work out great, but it didn't work out. He was born, but the thing that didn't change in him when he was born, his eyes wouldn't change. He was supposed to have like blue eyes, like normal humans or whatever, but it didn't happen because that's a, it's a God trait that wouldn't go away. So he has blue mercurial, mercurial eyes, they describe it as like swirling silver, like liquid mercury or whatever. And... Everybody took that as a sign of divinity. So the husband, the king, he uh, hated his wife, assuming she cheated on him with Zeus or some other god or whatever. But the thing is, he was born a twin, which is really kind of stupid on their logic. Not to say anything against Sherilyn King, but it's stupid on their logic. Because how can one twin be good and all normal and pure, but the other twin be all horrible and evil and all that kind of stuff, like they were saying. But in any case, as a result, they sold him to, not sold him, but they gave him away to the king's uncle to go live in Atlantis. And also, the in order to get him to a human body, the queen of the Atlantis heaven, um, Apollome, she needed help. So she used her cousin, um, Epithemia, who's the goddess of desire and excess, use her to place his body him him in the body of a human queen and she touched him when she wasn't supposed to 
and as a result by being touched by the hand of desire it makes them completely irresistible to anyone over the age of puberty so he even as a little kid everybody wanted to rape him and have sex with him and all that stuff they he was unnaturally beautiful be beautiful and all this kind of stuff so they um gave him away to his uncle and his uncle ended up turning him into a sex slave and forcing him to be a prostitute so for years and years and years he's a prostitute and all this stuff and his sister Rissa goes to, she wants to see him because he's been in Atlantis for so long and nobody ever said anything about him what happened to him nothing like that and she was like the only person that didn't hate him so she went and kidnapped him away brought him back to Greece to one of their summer palaces and hid him away for a long time after she found out he was a sex slave and she was trying to secure him a place in another kingdom so that he could go there and be um, you know safe and stuff but before he was able to go to the other kingdom and go and be safe and be hidden away um, his dad and you know all the other people came to the summer palace and found him and sent him right back and then he was forced to be sex slave some more for a long time again it made him really bitter and evil and all this kind of stuff and um time goes on this like i'm trying not to go and completely describe the entire thing because i really could because it's really really good um but essentially after a lot a lot a lot a lot of torment Ashron finds himself in a relationship with the goddess artemis and everybody knows that she's a virgin goddess and she's never supposed to have sex or anything like that but she kind of falls in love with Ashron. only i think only because she's um not immune to the hand of desire the um the curse that the goddess of desire pretty much placed on him and she doesn't even realize it so she's um a horrible evil terrible terrible person because i mean you can almost assume guys would be like that because they're not humans they don't know anything about humans emotions really other than the fact that they made them but um yeah that whole thing was a train wreck of a relationship he then tries to kill his brother who I mean their lives are also tied together like if Asheron dies his brother Styx dies but if Styx dies then nothing happens to Asheron and Styx is brought back to life Asheron tries to kill him doesn't work and then Blase Spree happens his mom is locked up in the hell realm of Atlantis and on their 21st birthday Asheron's powers are unlocked and <sighs> it's so much detail and a bunch of stuff happens then Asheron dies come back then he becomes a great warrior gets control of his powers and all that stuff and then they fast forward to present day time okay I'm gonna stop going into major detail about it because you won't even really need to read the book if I continuously go because it's I could go into so 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 much detail but bottom line towards the uh, end of the story he meets a woman and he's 11,000 years old by this time and he meets a woman and they fall in love with each other and then Artemis tries to kill her and it doesn't work out and then his mom gives her some of her powers and then she can be with him now because she's kind of a goddess in a way and then all happiness happens they have a kid, they get married, and all this kind of stuff. It's really, 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 really good. Just believe me and trust me on that. It's really good. And I downloaded the audiobook. Um, the audiobook is 24 hours long. Like, that tells you how long it is. Like, it's 24 hours long. And, um, it's so full of detail. It gives you the origin of the Apolites and the Daemons, which are the main bad guys and um the rest of the dark country series it gives you the origins of the were hunters which is you know a species in that world too it obviously gives you asheron's um story it gives you just ugh, a lot of really cool information it's a really 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 good book and to wrap up this really long video I'm going to say download it or go to the library and get a copy get the audiobook do something read this book it's a great 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 book the storyline is great and detailed and it sets up a lot of really good stuff and Sherilyn Kenyon just announced that she's doing a second 
well, not second, but she's doing the Sticks book. Even though everyone thought she would never write a story from Sticks' point of view, because Stick is a terrible, hor was, I don't know, he's perceived to be a terrible person, because, well, he was a real super douche. But, um, and he's got a book coming out, and I'm going to get that, and I'm going to read that, because it should be good. Anything she writes is good. So really, 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 really good story. Great story, great book, great writing, great pace. Like, it's just done really, really well. That's all I got to say. Really, really well. Really well. And the next video I'll make is probably going to be a book review on The Summoning by Kelly Armstrong. It was recommended to me by Necromancer18, one of my viewers, our viewers, one of us, you know. Um, and I need to get my thoughts together on that book. It's a really good book. I just don't really know how to talk about it yet. Like, it's really good and I really like it. I just got to figure out how to articulate how I feel about it. But yeah, that'll be the next video. Hopefully I'll get that done sometime in the next couple of days. Alright, thanks for watching. And yeah, yeah, whatever. <laughs> Alright, I will see you guys later. Bye.